Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about an anticipated review of a perfume that some of you have asked me to do but I haven't done yet because the winter time hasn't arrived yet or arriven. But it arriveth now because it's really cold outside. So this is the time to start using Chanel Queer de Russie, in my case Pure Perfume or Old School Eau de Toilette. These bottles are not in production anymore but Anyway, Queer de Russie was uh, made in 1926, believe it or not. It's a very, very, very old composition. Coco Chanel herself smelled it, so it's considered to be an original Chanel perfume. And uh, reformulated slightly, yes, of course, because regulations on all sorts of ingredients that can go into perfumes today have been modified and changed, unfortunately. But still, nevertheless, I do believe, as I have smelled in the past, a vintage bottle of the perfume, Queer de Russie is kind of, you could still recognize the original formulation, like the original, what, like the soul of Queer de Russie used to be in the 20s. Um, <clears throat> it is a heavy perfume. This is how I open my pure perfume. This little package was before they repackaged them. Now they come in different bigger boxes, even though it's still 15 ml. Uh, I would definitely go for the pure perfume if you get a chance, if you can. Uh, go to Chanel Boutique to... Um, these are boutique exclusives. They're, they are from the Chanel Exclusives line. Um, four of the perfumes have existed since Chanel's time, which is number 22, Gardenia, Bois des Îles, and Queer de Russie. Queer de Russie is a very interesting concoction because it is kind of a male perfume combined with femininity at the same time. So it's very unisex in my personal modest opinion. It has rose in it, it has a lot of tobacco in it, it has a lot of leather in it, it's powdery at the same time. It has uh, sandalwood in it as well. It's a deep, smoky, smoky, smoky scent. But because it is also feminine at the same time, they tried to add a little bit of sweetness through the rose or the jasmine, or I don't know what else they put into it, that kind of adds that honey touch to a smoky, deep scent. Um, so what you do is you usually, and I do it like, so you see with time, uh, the little bits on the cap here, on the stopper, because you see it's kind of opaque, it's not really glossy um, glass. These little bits rub off with time and then they fall into the liquid, hence the liquid becomes a little bit more um, foggy, if you may. But that don't worry about that, that's typical for all splash perfumes. It doesn't mean that the perfume is, has gone bad or not. So we just put a tab a little here, tab a little here. Um, we don't usually, you know, I would do this to rub off the leftover. There you go. We don't rub uh, too much because we don't want the molecules of the perfume to uh, get damaged. So what happens is it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous smell. And um, as far as the quality of the pure perfume goes, typical for Chanel, you know, the pure essences, pure perfumes, stay pretty close to the skin. They're extremely elegant that way. So you need your partner or whoever you wish to stay close to to come really close to you to unravel the, the beauty and the magic of these of these babies. And, um, and you should play with that. You should use this as a weapon. <laughs> Boys and girls alike, use this as a weapon because uh, they are powerful love potions. <laughs> Um, but all, all pun uh, aside and jokes aside, um, to me personally, it catapults me way into some past history, memory, very Proust-like life that maybe I haven't even lived or I don't know, some past life where things happened in a different way. The second I smell the pure perfume of Queen de Russie, same happens to me with number 22, time just slows down. I don't have the feeling we live in a technological, virtual, internet era anymore. I just go back to beautiful, elegant clothes, sitting in cafes, having, you know, lovely little drinks. Or if you want to go to Italy, having an aperitivo around 6 p.m. with uh, friends or family or lovers. And um, preparing yourself in the cold kind of winter months to shift into evening and night. As a matter of fact, when I mention night, this is a very, very evening-oriented perfume. It's not a morning type of scent. It's extremely elegant. It's very rich and textured and layered, so that you might want to consider using this one 
for an elegant dinner. You could use it for a business meeting, but it better be a high-end business meeting. We're not talking about a business meeting where you're applying for some job. We're talking about partners meeting up to do business and uh, where big money is involved. Or, if not big money, big intentions, big plans for the future. Because Squid Zero C is kind of oriented in that direction. Don't forget that it was uh, made um, in an era where, you know, the Russian aristocrats had escaped from Russia, have come to, you know, France, and uh, Chanel wanted to dress them all up. Made fun of them as well because, you know, she started selling them fake jewelry for the price of real jewels which she still does today from her grave because we're still spending a fortune on uh, glass pearls and uh, plastic uh, diamonds. But truth be told, Queer de Russie, Russian leather, was, you know, Chanel isn't the first one to use this sort of uh, titling. That was an era where a lot of Russian leather concoctions were circulating. Chanel wasn't the first nor the last to use this name. But, however, she was definitely one of the most intense people connected to the um, aristocracy, the Russian aristocracy from the time. And she, or I hope, you know, that somebody for her, her developers of this perfume, uh, was it Ernest Bo who did it, I think, uh, who developed it, and she picked it out together with him, um, that they had this in mind, this sort of feel. You know, this is like probably how they felt decay of, of, a, of an era or the end of an era felt and the beginning of a new era would smell like. Of course, Chanel number no. 5, which came a couple of years before this one, was the scent of the new time, of the new epoch, of the new era. But this one, nevertheless, even though it does behold the heaviness of an aristocracy of a time that is almost long gone, it still bears a whiff of hope as far as I'm personally concerned, because it's not a heavy perfume, or it's not just a heavy perfume. It can be cloying if you overdo it, especially if you put too much of the eau de toilette on. Um, as you can even see, they still have, you know, they bear quite a few natural ingredients. Uh, they even have different colors. You see, this is lighter than this one, so they have developed, uh, they come from two different batches of flowers and ingredients. Uh, they were bought in a distance of two years. So you see they both reacted differently to oxygen, uh, which is a good sign. It's not a bad sign. These are just leftovers. I never like to finish a bottle. I always like to keep a couple of uh, drops inside just for reference for myself for the future so I can see how they develop and stuff like that. But uh, definitely worth trying out if you get a chance. And uh, very winter, very fall and beginning of spring type of scent. It's not a summer scent. So be warned. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, give me a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, uh, you know, perfume reviews or uh, Chanel or Moschino or Hermes or Louis Vuitton or just fun reviews or, you know, unboxings, hauls, anything of that kind. Um, as for now, I bid you adieu and have a great holiday season wherever you may be and whatever you your plans might be. And I shall see you very soon again. Take care, everybody. Bye.